Thank you for tuning in to the newest episode of the Plain Bible Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Soaker. This episode is being released on September 19th, 2024. And this week we're talking about the struggle that many preachers have with time management. The work of preaching the gospel is obviously important. Therefore, it's important that we dedicate time to doing it and also to use that time wisely. We're going to talk about what that might look like here in this episode. For links to the story we're talking about and some other related materials, check out the show notes for this episode at plainbibleteaching.com slash podcast slash 09-19-24. Now for our story this week. Pastors report struggling with time management over commitment. From Lifeway Research, as pastors think about their greatest needs, some of those go beyond their ministries and are instead connected to their personal lives. Many pastors worry about their time management skills and how they can balance all the responsibilities that they have at church and at home. In their personal lives, half of U.S. Protestant pastors say they need to focus on time management, and more than half say avoiding overcommitment is a challenge for them, according to the latest release in the Greatest Needs of Pastors study from Lifeway Research. Now, that study found that 51% said that time management is their biggest challenge, and that's not really surprising to me. So I thought it would be good for us to discuss that in our episode today. Now, a couple of disclaimers before we get started in our discussion. First is that this article is a couple of years old, but I still believe this issue is probably relevant because I don't know how much has changed in that time. And second, the article talks about pastors but I am referring to preachers. The common denominational concept of a pastor is not biblical. They take some aspects of the elder role and some aspects of the work of a preacher and mesh those together into a different role that is not really what the Bible talks about. But since preachers are more likely to receive support for their work, I believe the points that are discussed in that article are more applicable to the work of a preacher. So that's what we're focusing on here. And one more thing before we get started. This discussion is primarily for preachers. But if you are not a preacher, that does not mean I think you should just turn off the episode now and move on. Some of the principles that we're going to discuss here will apply to all of us as Christians, no matter who we are. But also, maybe by listening to this discussion, you might better understand the constraints on those who have given themselves to the work of preaching, and more understanding on everyone's part is always a good thing. So there are a couple of ideas I want us to consider. First is that time management is a biblical principle. Every productivity guru, so-called, talks about time management, but they didn't come up with that on their own. The Bible addressed it long before any of them were ever around. The Apostle Paul said, Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. He said we are to make the most of our time, to use our time wisely. And this is something for all of us, not just preachers. But for those who are preachers, learning how to use your time wisely starts with remembering some fundamental principles. Number one, that your time is limited. This principle is found in James' instruction in James chapter 4, beginning in verse 13, where he said, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, If the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance, and all such boasting is evil. We can make plans, we can work to carry out those plans, but we can never do everything that we want or that we plan to do. And this is because life is uncertain. Even if we don't pass away as what that passage talked about, we will still never accomplish everything that we might plan because our time here is finite. And second, because of that, we can't do everything. If our time is limited, then that means we are limited. We cannot say yes to everyone or everything that comes along. There's an interesting passage near the end of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, where he said, 
But concerning Apollos, our brother, I encouraged him greatly to come to you with the brethren. And it was not at all his desire to come now, but he will come when he has opportunity. Would it have been good for Apollos to go to Corinth to work with the brethren there? Probably would have been. And since Paul suggested it, it seems like he thought it would be a good idea for Apollos to do that. But Apollos didn't go. Maybe he went later, but at least not right then, he didn't go. Now for us today, it's not hard to find good things that we might do in our work of preaching. Just like it might have been good for Apollos to go to Corinth, but we can't do everything. Apollos couldn't do everything. Paul couldn't do everything. We cannot do everything. We have to make choices. Another principle that we need to remember is that we need to be flexible. We cannot have every minute of our day planned and therefore neglect or ignore opportunities that arise to teach others, to help those that we come in contact with, or things like that. Sometimes unplanned activities will end up bearing the most fruit. Remember Jesus' conversation with the woman at the well in Samaria. That led to many of the people coming to Jesus, hearing him and believing him after she talked with Jesus, then she went to the city to tell the others there about him. The text says, From that city, many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all the things that I have done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they were asking him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more believed because of his word. Yet we need to understand that this was not a scheduled visit that Jesus made to Samaria. Near the beginning of the chapter, it says he was passing through Samaria on his way to Galilee. We cannot manage our time so rigidly that we ignore or neglect opportunities like this one. And then another principle is that we are a steward of the ministry that we have been given. Paul told the Corinthians, Let a man regard us in this manner as servants of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. In this case, moreover, it is required of stewards that one be found trustworthy. As an apostle, Paul was given the work of revealing the mysteries of God and proclaiming the gospel. It wasn't his work, it was the Lord's work. And in the same way, those who preach today have the responsibility to preach the word, to do the work of an evangelist and fulfill their ministry. It is not our work to do however we might want to do it. It is the Lord's work. And we will give an account for how we have stewarded that ministry that's been entrusted to us. Now those are some principles, but we also want to talk about some practical matters regarding how preachers might manage their time. In reality, time is fixed and we cannot change it. But we do manage what we do with the time that we have. And there are certain practices that we can implement. Number one, we have to do the work. That's simple enough, right? Well, Paul told Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. There is no productivity hack that replaces this. You cannot automate your Bible study. You can't use AI to write your sermons, or you shouldn't do that. You need to be willing to do the work. Number two, you can plan your work. This is a biblical principle. The wise man said the plans of the diligent lead surely to advantage, but everyone who is hasty comes surely to poverty. He said plans are beneficial if we are diligent. Otherwise, planning is just another form of procrastination where we just sit around and think about what we're going to do but never actually do anything. If we are diligent though, plans lead to an advantage. So have a plan for each day. Have a plan for the week. Don't just wing it and expect to accomplish what you could have accomplished had you sat down and made a plan of what you intend to do and what you intend to accomplish. And this can include sermon planning. I used to scoff at the idea of those who would plan out their sermons months or even a year in advance. But after trying it, I found it to be incredibly helpful to plan out your sermons ahead of time, that you never have to wonder, what am I going to preach this week? Because you've already planned, you've already scheduled what you're going to preach this week. Now, I've heard of preachers planning sermons for a year. 
I've even heard some who plan longer than that. But some who plan a year out, I don't do that. I plan about three months at a time. Currently, right now, this week, I'm planning my sermons for the last three months, the last quarter of 2024. Now, sometimes that schedule needs to be adjusted. It's never written in stone. We already talked about the principle that we need to be flexible. So sometimes the schedule changes, but having a plan in place is incredibly helpful. Again, you're never wondering, what am I preaching on this week? Because you've already figured that out. Number three, you can batch your work. Now, a lot of productivity advice mentions batching your work. That simply means doing similar tasks together so your brain isn't having to switch from one topic to another. Constant context switching is mentally taxing and will slow you down. Sermon planning, as we talked about in the last point, is a form of batching where you brainstorm topics for several weeks all in one sitting. But there are other ways you can do this as well. I do it with social media posts. Every week I send out an article each weekday to the Daily Bible Notes email list and also post that on the Daily Bible Notes Facebook page. I post nearly every day on the Plain Bible Teaching Facebook page and Twitter account or X account or whatever it's called now. And I do all the posts for a week in one sitting, usually on Friday mornings. But I do all of it at one time. If I did all those a day at a time or even one post at a time, it would easily take me three or four times longer than it does now. Batching all of that together frees up extra time for other things. Fourth, another thing that you can do with your work is to reuse your work. And to illustrate this, I'm going to reuse something that I wrote for the Plain Bible Teaching Sermons newsletter, which if you're not receiving that, I know this episode is directed to preachers. If you're not receiving the Plain Bible Teaching Sermons newsletter, which is really directed to preachers, I'll include a link in the show notes where you can sign up for that newsletter that comes out once a week. But in this particular issue of the newsletter, I talked about making the most of your sermons and offered some ideas on how you might do this. You can take the outline or a portion of it and write it as an article that could be posted on a website, a blog, or social media. You can add the audio recording to a sermon podcast or create a sermon podcast if you don't have one already. If the sermon is recorded on video, you can post the entire video on YouTube and even create a new YouTube channel if you don't have one yet for sharing those videos. If the sermon is not recorded on video, you can record short videos discussing various points of the lesson and post them to YouTube or other social media sites. If you create charts for your sermon, you can export them as JPEGs and post them on social media. And those are just a few ideas. But after spending X number of hours, however long you spend, on preparing a sermon and then preaching that to whoever happens to be present in the assembly when you preach it, you can then spend a fraction of that time and reach potentially many more people around the world by reusing your work. So then the fifth thing, what you can do with your work is take a break from your work. And I will admit This has been a hard lesson for me to learn over the years. But time management does not mean arranging your entire schedule so that you work all of the time. Yes, we are to be hardworking. Yes, there are times when, like Paul, as he told the brethren in Thessalonica, he was working night and day. Yet Jesus also showed us that we need to rest even in busy seasons. In Mark's account, it says, The apostles gathered together with Jesus, and they reported to him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. For there were many people coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. They went away in the boat to a secluded place by themselves. Now, could they have just pushed through and just got more done because there were more people coming to them and more opportunities? For a little while, they could have. But Jesus knew they needed to rest. We need to rest. I'm getting better at this, but it's still something that I need to work at. You have to manage your time in such a way that you don't burn out and become useless in the Lord's cause. So time management is important for all Christians because of the need to make the most of our time. But it is particularly important for those who have dedicated their lives to preaching the gospel. Those who have been given the opportunity to do the work of an evangelist have an incredible responsibility to do that work in the best way possible. And hopefully the principles and practices that we've talked about here 
will help you make the most of your time as you preach the Word. That's all for this week. Thank you for listening to the Plain Bible Teaching Podcast. Hope you found this discussion to be helpful. For links to the story we talked about and some other related materials, check out the show notes for this episode at plainbibleteaching.com slash podcast slash 091924. If you have a moment to rate and review the podcast or share it with others who may be interested, including someone who preaches the gospel and you think might benefit from this, sharing that with them is always appreciated. And if you're listening to this, remember that we also upload video versions of the podcast to the Plain Bible Teaching YouTube channel. So if you prefer to watch this on video, that option is there for you. And if you are watching this on YouTube, please like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can see the other videos that we post here from time to time. And if you see a news story or have some topic that you think would make for a good discussion, send that to me at andy at plainbibleteaching.com. Thanks again for listening, and I hope to talk to you again next week.